All right, welcome back to the Crabby Days. Today we're going to do a full playthrough of the very first chapter from Legends of Sleepy Hollow, which is a brand new Kickstarter I just received in the mail. All right, so Legends of Sleepy Hollow, as you can tell by the board here, it is a dungeon crawly type of game. You're going to be doing what you normally do in that type of game, moving your characters around, doing attacks, but there's also different actions you can do to interact with the environment and different missions. All right, now for this game, there is a storybook with 10 different chapters, which are like 10 different missions. And then there's also an expansion that adds an extra three, I believe. So you'll have 13 missions in total to go through and figure out the whole story uh, behind what's happening to this town. All right, so before I start, I don't know if I'm going to cover every single chapter. I'm going to do for sure the first, let's say, three. Uh, so you can follow along. Uh, I mean, you can write in the comments below if you want me to do them all. Uh, I'm not even sure I'm going to do a review or a learn to play for this one, considering it's pretty basic and you'll get the gist of what's happening just by watching the playthroughs, and that's fine. All right, that being said, I'm not a big fan of this rule book that was in the box. You know, it's missing a lot of detail. I had to go, you know, through BGG and extra and watch their video that they posted online to even know a lot of what's happening. Uh, this is pretty useless, I would say. All right. So that being said, if I do make any rules mistakes, please let me know. I'm going to write it down in the comments below. So, you know, it's for the community. Everyone's going to know what those mistakes were. All right. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. All right, so let's start our adventure on chapter one, class dismissed. All right, so each chapter pretty much starts the exact same way. There's gonna be a prologue with a bit of story fluff here and there. Uh, I'm not gonna read this for you, obviously, but you know, at a very high level summary here, our legends are making our way to the uh, schoolhouse over here to try to figure out what happened uh, to this missing character. All right, so after that, we're going to set up the game exactly how it says on the uh, setup sheet. So put out the board, put out the tokens, some enemies are going to be out there. And obviously our enemies are going to be starting at level one because we're just starting the game. All right. And the most interesting things appear on the chapter information panel. All right. First of all, what's our goal? All right, the goal for this one is to find the five keys. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, there's the environment action here. You need to do an environment action at each of these tokens. And every time you do that, you're going to mill through this deck and the five keys are in here. All right, and then you're going to figure out what you're going to do after that. All right, other things that are important over here is going to tell you what the AI is going to be doing, who they're going to be attacking, and what's going to be spawning at the ends of every uh, second and third round. All right, so this book, I'm going to have it up here in the top left. Let's put these tokens on here just to know what the AI is going to be doing. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a dungeon crawly game. And the way the round structure works is uh, the legends, which are the characters, are all going to do a turn in any order that you like. And then the AI is going to do their turn following the book. And then back to the legends, they're just going to be going back and forth. So all the legends and the AI, all the legends, all the AI. All right, so what do we want to do to start the game all right what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to get uh, emily's technique ready all right so i'm going to introduce all the characters uh when they're going to activate for the first time all right but emily is this character over here with her player board so you know what let me actually zoom in over here to show you what's act actually happening so emily is sort of the range glass cannon of the team all right she only has six health which is the by far the least uh but she doesn't move at four which is the most all right, and she's going to have four action discs. All right, now the way the game works is when you want, when it's your turn, you want to do an action. Well, you can place your token wherever you like to perform that action. All right, if you're putting it on a card, though, it's not unlimited amount of spots available. Well, it's only going to have one available until you use up all your tokens and you sort of do a refresh where all those tokens end up back in your prep area, and then you can put them out. But there are different ways to empty out these slots uh, for different characters. All right, so... For Emily, like I already mentioned, I'm going to do her first action, which is the track action. All right. So it says here, choose a creature type to become your prey. All right. So her whole mechanism is she can assign things to be a prey. And then there's different uh, benefits on different cards and abilities that say if it's a prey, then do X amount of extra damage and that sort of thing. All right. For example, here it says if you are targeting your prey, you get plus one die worth of damage. All right. So what I'm going to do for this, well, what's my prey? You always have. You know, there's only three different enemies in this game, so I can pick between the Gobkin, the Shrink Root, which I'm going to call just the Roots from now on, and then there's the Pumplings. 
All right, looking at the board, I think I'm going to send her this way. So she's going to attack more or less uh, this uh, gobkin. So you know what? I'm going to pick this as her prey. And to signify this, I'm just going to grab one of the extra models and place it in the slot. All right, so I don't forget. All right. So that was her action, but she didn't move. So in this game, you can move and do your action or do your action and move. Uh, you can even do your action in the middle of a move if you're wondering. All right, so uh, where do I want to move? So she moves at four. Let's go one. This is one space. Uh, two, three, four. I'm going to be out of range uh, of him even if he moves up. So I think she's safe right over here. All right, so that was Emily. So who's next? I think the next character to move is going to be Jeremiah. And he's going to go and try to take out this guy in one, uh, one hit of his shovel. All right, so he's going to move first. So he's going to go one, two, three. I'm in the same room as uh, this guy. Uh, so he's, you know, the tanky guy. So he does all melee. He always has to be in the same uh, area as who he's attacking. So let's go look at his player board. Right, it's this one right over here. All right, and just like Emily, everything's exactly in the same place. It's going to tell you her, his starting health, uh, his actions. So he starts with five and his movement, which is only three. All right, so his action that I want to perform is going to be the practiced smash. All right, so this one's going to do a bit more damage than his regular smash. All right, so I'm going to put a token on here. And this is going to allow me to roll two dice plus two damage. All right, my weapon's not going to give me any extra bonuses. All right, but he is the only one that actually starts with a talisman card. Uh, actually, this is called a relic card. All right, slots in right over here. And this relic uh, makes him start the game with four extra health. That's why on his dial over here, he's already at 12. And he has plus one die damage. All right, so in total, if you look at his whole tableau, whenever he does an attack or this smashed attack, he's going to get three dice plus two damage. All right, you got to add this die to it. I'll fix that later. All right, so there you go. We moved. Let's do our attack. So three dice plus two. Let's see what we're going to get. So that's a pretty darn good roll. Uh, that's going to be five plus two is going to be seven damage. All right, now how much health do these things have? It says five, but you're going to look at their player board and they have one defense. Defense in this game is exactly like armor. <laughs> you just minus one from the total. Um, so it's going to be seven minus one, which is six. That's still enough to kill it. So boom, there's a dead root. It's my first kill of the game. All right, awesome. All right, he's pretty much done. He moved and he attacked. And that's it. All right, now for the other two characters, well, it's going to be a short introduction because what I'm going to do with them is they're going to move and do an environment action to figure out, uh, well, to start milling through his deck so we can find those five keys. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Elijah over here. And he's more of a healer type of character. So he's the one that's uh, right over there. Okay, so he's going to move first. So he has the exact same stats as Jeremiah except for the health. So seven health, five action, this, three movement. So where do we want to move? Uh, with three, let's go one, two. Let's just go right here, super close by. All right, so he's done his movement. Let's do an environment action. You know what? We'll go over his other skills later when he does something more interesting. Right now, he's just going to do an environment action. So he's going to remove this, as it says in the book over here. You remove the token. You mill through the deck and see what it says. And it's not a key. All right, this one is basically just says, unlock spawn point number four, crumpled paper. All right, I'm going to discard this from the game. So spawn point number four is here. So now this one's going to be activated. All right, for this mission, uh, there's spawn point one, two, three, four, five, but two to five are locked until you get those cards that unlock it. All right, that's pretty much it for Elijah. Not much else he can do. Uh, so let's go to Matthias. Um, so he also has a movement of three. So let's move three, one, two. This is all one space. <laughs> and then three right over here. Um, let's do an environment action. So let's pay for that with the action marker here. And let's remove this from the game exactly like before. Flip the next card over. And of course, it's not a key. And this one says unlock spawn point number three. All right, so I'm not getting very lucky right now. Just adding a bunch more spawn points. 
where enemies can appear. Okay, so that's uh, right over here. All right, and there you go. All our legends have done uh, their action. All right, after that, we're going to go to the AI step. All right, for that, it's very simple. You're just going to follow what's currently underneath this marker. So this is move and then attack, and all the opponents must move, and then all the opponents must attack. Okay, so uh, the order of operations is always bosses go first, then it's going to be gobkins, then roots, then pumplings. All right, there's no bosses on the board. So let's go with the gob king. They're going to move. Then the roots are going to move. Then the pumplings are going to move. There's no pumplings. All right, then attack. Uh, Gobkin's going to attack. He has a range of one. Don't forget to look at the card. Uh, nothing's in his range of one, so nothing to attack. And the roots have a range of zero, so there's nothing for him to attack. So they're pretty much done. All right, this marker is going to move over. So next round, they're going to move, attack, and spawn. All right, spawning is where we're going to look at the marker across right over here. All right, but that was the end of round number one. Let's start round two. Alrighty, so for round two, I um, think what I'm going to do to start off is activate Emily so she can shoot this guy down with one shot. All right, it's going to be awesome. Okay, so uh, let's go back to her player board over here. So she's going to activate her kill shot ability. All right, let's take a closer look at this card. All right, so this, this just does straight up five damage. You don't even have to roll a die, nothing. All right, but it says if your attack is versus your prey, which it is, I remember my prey is the gobkin over there. Just as a reminder, I put that token. All right, it says uh, deal double damage. So instead of dealing five, I'm going to be doing 10. And that's awesome because he's got 10 life. Boom, one shot. You don't even have to roll. He's just dead. Right, let's remove it from the board. Um, and that's pretty much it for Emily. Let me just put this card back. But this card, remember, is exhausted now, so I'm gonna have to use both these tokens uh, before refreshing. Okay, so that's it for her. Uh, I mean, for the other characters, let's just move and do the environment action. Let's try to mill through that deck uh, fast. All right, it's probably a good idea. So uh, I'm gonna do Jeremiah, uh, sorry, Eli, who's gonna move and do an environment action, so one, two three let's look at this one here let's look at the next card hopefully it's a key and of course it's not a key all right so which one is this one unlocking this is unlock spawn point number five okay so that's this one here all right well there's only one more of those unlock which is two and the rest should be keys so we're <laughs> the next few uh sh we, sh we should be getting some keys um so up next Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's do um, let's do uh, Matthias here. He's just gonna move two over here. Do an environment action. So again, move a token over here. And let's see if it's a key. And yes, there you go. It's our first key. Okay, so I'm not gonna read you the story. Pause the video if you want to read it. Uh, but this is just a reminder that when you get the five keys. Uh, then any hero can go to the desk and then do a environment action and then you're going to go get the 113 card because these cards are all labeled all right now i'm going to track the keys by actually slotting them underneath the board over here so when there's five we know that we can do an action right at the desk all right so matthias did an action uh eli and uh, emily did the last character is uh, jeremiah all right so for him uh again as discussed, I'm just going to go uh, uh, do an environment action. Do I go this one or that one? Let's go. Let's go to this one. That's fine. So he's just going to move one. It's going to go look at this one. Um, look at the next card. And there you go. It's our second key. Right, again, you can pause the video and read the text if you like. And this is just the exact same reminder uh, from the other card. All right, so there you go. We're two fifths of the way down. Okay, and just like before, at the end of round one, we're done. So let's go to the AI step. So they're going to do move. Well, only one bad guy on the board is going to move towards the closest enemy. It's going to be this way. Uh, then attack. No one for him to attack. But now it's spawn. All right, so for spawning, we're going to spawn three of these uh, pumpkins, whatever they're called. All right, and where they're going to spawn is we're going to roll a die. All right, the die is going to tell us which spawn point it appears on. All right, we're going to flip. 
and it's four. Four is this one, and it is unlocked, so they will appear on this spot. One, two, and they all have two health, I believe. Yep. All right, there you go. Which is not so bad, because uh, he has a special ability where you can kill them with one shot, and I'll show you that probably next turn. All right, but that was the end of round number two. Let's move this over. We did spawn, so this is going to move over. And there you go. So what's our next move going to be? All right, just going over my options. Um, I mean, these two guys are pretty far away, so I'm going to probably do environment actions with the, these two. Uh, but these two characters, I'll probably send him to kill the pumplings and send him uh, to maybe try and kill the uh, root over here. All right, so let's do the easy ones first. Um, let's do an, an environment action here with Emily. So let's do this. Flip over the, remove the token, flip over the next card. Is it a key? It is not a key. I just found an old chair. All right. Actually, this is an awesome item. Um, you can put fear or an action uh, marker on it, and it's a one-shot thing where you can do 10 damage. And this is going to come in handy uh, later on. Stay tuned. Okay, but this is an item, so it's going to fit into your item slot right over here. All right, so that's it for her. Uh, uh, she didn't move yet, so you know what? Let's move. Let's go one, two, three. She moves at four, so that's fine. Uh, for uh, Eli over here, let's move up one. Again, do the environment action. Let me move the disc over to, on his board. And let's see what number six is. And it's the third key. Again, pause if you want to read the story. And it's the third of fifth keys, of five keys. All right, so we got three down here. All right, so those two are done. Let's deal with these two characters. So let's start with Matthias. So he's going to move. So let's go uh, one, two. And you know what? He's actually going to move in there. Even though he has a range of one, uh, I might as well move in there because next turn I can do an environment action and move out of there. Uh, so I don't have to waste time going in. So he's going to join these uh, guys over here. All right, we haven't investigated Matthias's board yet. All he's been doing up to now is environment actions, but he's going to do something different now. All right, he's going to do the barrage ability. All right, so his whole shtick is that he has a tactic over here that changes the uh, uh, special marker here from attack party low to attack party high. It starts off at low, and I'm not going to change it. Uh, you can change it with this tactic, uh, but I'm going to use this ability. All right, this is an area uh, effect, so it's area one damage die, so I'm going to be able to attack all those pumplings with one attack. Right, and it says here, if your attack priority is low, which it is, plus one damage on that attack. So it's one die plus one damage. And then after the attack, I can move each of the monsters in that location by one, but I'm obviously not going to do that. All right, so I got to remember, this is one die plus one, but not just that, my weapon is going to give me something. All right, my weapon gives me one die plus one. Uh, plus one range. So in total, I'm going to have two dice plus two damage. Okay, so let's put this back. Oops. I'm going to pay for that with the action marker. All right, and let's see if we can kill these pumplings. Now, they only have two health, uh, so they're pretty much automatically going to die. Uh, four damage plus the extra plus two, that's enough. Uh, so they're all going to suffer that amount, so they're all dead. Okay, so that's going to be it for Matthias. I think we're good like so. All right, up next, let's move Jeremiah. And I mean, he can come here and investigate that, but I mean, Matthias is in a good position. So let's try to move our way to try to get these things uh, uncovered and try to take this guy out as well. All right, so he's going to move three. One, two, three, and be in the same location as the root. All right, let's see if we can get really lucky. So um, the ability I'm going to use is Smash. Um, so it's one die damage. But remember, because of the uh, the relic, I get an extra die. So that's going to be two dice. All right, now, the only way I can kill this thing is if I roll double threes. Because remember, it does have one defense, which is one armor. Uh, so let's see what happens. Roll the dice. Roll the three minus one. So it's going to suffer only two damage uh, in total. So we go down to three. All right, that was pretty much uh, 
it for uh, Jeremiah. Not much else I can do. Uh, so that's it for the crew, right? They've activated, he activated, and Jeremiah activated. So let's go back to the AI steps. All right, so here it's move. He's not going to move. Attack. He's going to attack Jeremiah. All right, so looking at his board here, his attack is one die. So let's do that. Um, that's it. So it's going to try to attack uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah has one armor. Um, if you look at his, uh, his sweater over here, his coat, you're going to see it right over here. So as long as I roll a one or less, he's going to suffer no damage. Boom! Just like that, it's blocked. Now, if I ever do damage to a character, um, that's when you gain fear tokens as well. All right, you're going to see something I haven't gained yet. You're going to see in the next battle that I will be generating some fear. Uh, so it is going to be coming. Okay, so that's it for the attack. Then there's going to be a spawn step. So we're going to spawn another root. Let's see where we spawn it. It's number five again. Or no, it's the first time I rolled a five. <laughs> Sorry about that. So he's going to start with five health and spawn right here. All right, and that's the end of round three. Don't forget to move this over. This is going to move over. So next round, nothing's going to spawn. Um, and then the round after that, they're going to spawn again. Okay, so who do we want to start with? Um, let's make it easy to start with these two guys because I don't think they're going to be doing any attacks. Um, so Emily's going to go. Uh, she's going to use her last action disc before her refresh on the environment action. Again, same thing as before. Let's use a token, flip it over. And of course, it's not a key. I want to get to those keys. So this is the last spawn uh, space two, uh, which is now active. All right, uh, she can still move. So moves at four, one, two, three, four. There's no point to be staying in that corner anymore. She can work her way down over here. All right, the next character I guess that I'll move is Matthias over here. So again, you know, I'm just trying to get to that uh, those keys as fast as possible. So let's do an environment action as well. Let's do that. Move the, the token. Next card, let's see, and it's the key, awesome. Let me show you this, you can read the text, pause the video. All right, that's the fourth key. All right, one more to go, one more. All right, now he can still move. So let's go one, two, three. Let's get closer to the action over here. Uh, and there you go, so he's good. Um, all right, so both of these characters went up next. Okay, uh, so next I guess I'll make El um, Jeremiah attack the root over here and for Eli, maybe attack him or come down, we'll see. So uh, let's activate uh, Jeremiah's ability here. He's gonna do smash, the same thing as last time, uh, which is um, uh, one die of damage plus his talisman, so two dice of damage. Uh, I'm gonna need to roll a four to kill him because he's got one armor. Oh, look at that. That's like rolling snake eye, uh, box cars. All right, so that's six minus one of his armor. That would have killed him even if, if even if he was at full life. All right, so let's remove the uh, the root from the board. All right, after that, you can still move. I mean, yeah, sure, let's move. One, two, let's just move right over here. Uh, or let's go into the spawn area over here. All right, and then, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Eli, I guess we'll just move closer to everyone else. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to one, two, three. Um, and stay there. Um, actually, let me back up one second. Um, actually, never mind. <laughs> I think we're good like that. By the way, these dials move constantly. You just got to be careful when you pick them up that they don't move. Um, all right, so the uh, heroes are done. Let's go back to the AI step. Same as before, move attack. Only one guy on the board, so he's going to move. He's going to do attack. He's done. He's going to move over over here. All right, so let's go to my next round. You know, pretty evident. I'm just going to try to unlock these and see which one is going to be the key. So let me start with Jeremiah first. Um, let's do an environment action. The first time he's going to do that. Uh, take this token and hopefully it's the last key that we need and there you go it is the key all right so i'm gonna pause the video you can read it if you like and this is the fifth key so just as a reminder when you get the five keys 
any hero can take an environment action on the desk. So 113. Uh, to get card 113. So it's going to be our fifth uh, card. All right, now he can still move. Um, so let's do that. So let's go one, two, and let's just join everyone at the desk over here. All right, so that's it for him. Now, who do we want to move to the desk? <laughs> All right, I can move any character here uh, to do the action. Um, let's move uh, Emily because she needs to do a refresh. Uh, so let's do that. Actually, no, never mind. I'd rather do it with Matthias because then he can use his last token to then do a refresh next turn. All right, so he's going to move one down to the desk. All right, he's going to use his last action disc over here on the environment action to now get card one colon 13. So I'm going to go to the box. I'll get it. I'll be right back. All right. So a little bit of a spoiler. If you don't want to know spoilers, maybe shut off the video. But uh, basically the horseman is now in the schoolhouse with us right he appears right in the middle over here all right you're going to read the cards uh, so 113 basically says whoever uh did that search action is going to get this relic card over here which lets you re-roll a die i'll show you that later when eventually matthias attacks uh then um it says go get the next card which is the uh uh, horseman's arrival it's going to say put the horseman in the middle uh, shuffle the other cards uh, one of the cards is going to be his stat cards and what he's going to do on his turn uh, just like the enemies over here and that's it we're pretty much ready to go all right you're just going to continue all right let me put these back in the box all right so uh uh ba -ba -ba -ba. so matthias did an action jeremiah did an action so i still have to do actions with uh, my other two characters before the horseman's going to do a massive attack and try to kill us okay so i think what i'm going to do is do the ward ability from my healer character and i'll show you that right now all right so the one i want to do is this card so he's going to put a token right over here all right so let's get the card whoops um actually he has to move first but i'm going to show you in a couple of seconds so uh the ward is restored um uh, Restore to, two to all heroes in target uh, location within range. Then place your ward token on that location. Uh, all heroes in that location with the ward token gain plus one defense and plus two damage. All right, at the start of my next turn, I can get two fear to keep this on the board. All right, um, actually, his range is zero, I believe. So he actually has to move in first and then activate this, which uh, there's no one that needs a heal right now. But what's important is with this on the board, everyone's going to have plus one defense which is going to be critical because she only has six life all right so very important uh and we're going to deal two extra damage uh for anyone that's in there all right so let's give this back to the character all right but that was pretty much his action he moved and this was uh what he did all right up next the last character that i'm going to activate is emily and she's going to do a massive amount of damage because she's going to use her chair all right, so, uh, before she does anything on her turn, uh, she actually performs a refresh. So this is a free thing that you do. You don't, it's not an action. All right, if you run out of discs in your prep area, whether it's fear or action discs, they all return. All right, after that, she can, she's free to do whatever she wants uh, as her action. And she's not going to move, but she's just going to use an action disc on the chair. Boom. All right, now the chair, we already know, we read it before. It's deal 10 in damage. Now, because of the ward, it's going to be 12 damage. Um, and I believe items, they're one shots. As soon as you use them, they get discarded. Um, and if there was an, a token on it, well, it just gets returned back into your prep area. All right, so let's get rid of this. And let's give the Headless Horseman 12 damage. So he starts at 30, I believe, yeah, 30 health. So he's already down to 18 boom just like that all right so now we've activated pretty much all the characters right yeah so they've all gone so let's go to the ai step all right so they're going to move then attack then spawn all right so obviously moving boss first he's not going to move he's already in an area with two guys that's fine uh after that no gobkins uh, the root's going to go and move so closest character is over here so they're going to move one space um after that uh, attack 
All right, so uh, for an attack, the horseman uh, draws a card from the top of his personal deck, and he has a special ability. All right, very important, he does plus two damage to any legends in his current location. All right, so whoever he's attacking, plus two damage, all right, because it's going to be in the same area. All right, so let's see what attack he does to us. Flip over the first card, and it looks like it's in Intimidate. All right, it's actually his... Uh, his least powerful one in my opinion. All right, so each legend within line of sight, which is pretty much everyone, um, uh, rolls a die on a two or a three, they gain two fear. All right, so let's put this in his discard area right over here. So let's roll for all these characters. Uh, so let's roll for Emily, does she gain a fear? Nope. Let's roll for Eli, does he gain a fear? Yes, actually that's two fear, one, two. Now they go straight on to his prep area right over here. I'll show you if the other characters get a fear. Uh, let's roll for uh, Jeremiah. He does get two uh, fear. Let's grab from my little stash. And then finally for Matthias, he does not get two fear. Um, all right, so that was it for the oh, attack. He's not going to attack anyone. He uh, has no range. And then the final thing that they do is a spawn. So we're going to be spawning three more of these pumpkins, pumpkin guys, whatever they are. Uh, let's roll to see where they start. <laughs> One, which is at the main entrance. One, two, three. All right, so that's over. Let's move over. Let's move over. And let's go to the legends turn. Um, so I'm just going over my options. I think it's going to be pretty easy because of my ward over here. Everyone's going to be doing an extra plus two damage. Uh, that's already an extra eight. It only has 18 life left. We just have to do 10 damage amongst the rest of the characters. I think that's going to be pretty easy. All right, so let's go do that. Uh, so let's start off with Emily. Um, let's look at her board over here. So let's use a token on the kill shot. All right, so remember that's straight up five damage. You don't have to roll anything. So that's gonna be five plus two because the ward. So that's uh, seven damage. So they're gonna be at 11. Boom. Now she's not gonna move out of there. By the way, uh, if you wanna move out of a space um, from an enemy, uh, there's the attack of opportunity, which means they get to attack you back for uh, a roll of a die. Um, I mean, does she want to stay in there? Actually, you know what? She'll she'll move out. She doesn't want to get attacked from all these things. Uh, it's only going to be one die roll because there's only a boss there. So she's still going to move one, um, two, let's say. Uh, go to the desk area here. So let's see if she gets damaged. Uh, so on anything but the blank, she'll take one damage. So roll, she takes one damage. So let's give her one. So she's going to go down to five. All right, but in this game, every time you take a damage, you also get a fear. All right. Um, and if you take three damage, you get two fear. So that's going to be added to her little pool over here. All right, so up next, might as well activate Matthias. Uh, so before he gets to do anything, he does a refresh step. All right, and he's going to go in there and do a hip shot. Um, yeah, because Barrage is not going to be that useful right now. Um, so let's do, let's move first. So one, two. Um, let's pay for that hip shot. Now the hip shot says gain one target if I'm in low mode, which I'm going to gain uh, that. Uh, but I'm going to have to use a fear for that, but I'll see after if I want to do it. Um, uh, ba, ba, ba. And it's one die damage. So it's one die plus this one die plus one damage. Uh, so it's going to be two dice plus one. But it's, remember, plus two, so two dice plus three. All right, so let's see how much damage we do. It's going to be four plus three, seven more damage. Seven minus 11, that's going to be four left. All right, so there you go. So that's going to be pretty easy. You know what? I'll even finish him off with my uh, my uh, cleric guy um, instead of using my, uh, my shovel beat stick over here. All right, so before I start, I do have to take two fear. Remember to keep this thing in play. Uh, I'll do that, I'll pay for it just to keep it in play. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, use my last action disc. Actually, I can use fear. Well, it doesn't really matter. By the way, I didn't explain it yet, but uh, 
fear and action disc could be used on any of your primary actions here but other cards that you might have uh, will either be indicated with a solid red which is only action disc or a yellow jagged line which is the fear um, uh, discs all right so i'm going to do the uh, bless uh, sorry not the bless the wrath app uh, uh, wrath option here so it says give three damage to a foe and gain one fear right, so i'm going to do that let's gain another fear all right but that's going to be three plus two because of uh, the ward token uh plus two damage uh so that's going to be five damage in total it only has five uh, four health left so it's going to go to zero and it's going to die and there you go that's the end of chapter one all right because remember that the whole goal is let's go grab the card uh, the legends win this chapter when they defeat the horsemen, which we just did. All right. By the way, he didn't have armor, so it was straight up damage. You got to look at the card for that. All right. There you go. We're done. Uh, the AI is going to do a turn. We finish right away. So, you know, you're going to go to the book. You're going to go to the next page. And you're going to read the epilogue. All right. It's a bit of more story. And then you're going to read the reward at the end, which uh, pretty much unlocks another skill card for all the characters. All right, so that's it for chapter one. Let me know if I made any, any mistakes and uh, join me for chapter two. All right, so see you in the next one. Later.